Challenge Rots, one of the biggest and arguably best triathlon experiences out there. We are here in the transition and we're going to take a look through the age group transition. Take a look at the bikes, the bikes that aren't constricted by sponsors and what they want and see if we can find some fun and interesting tech. Let's go. I really like this. So this is some subtle frame customization from L Grangine. Sorry if I've said that wrong. Uh, they're from Germany and they have got some vinyl cutouts uh, stuck to their frame. So on this side, we've got a nod to Kona and also with a little uh, Hawaiian kind of turtle uh, design on this side. They've also got a sort of like profile of the city they're from, presumably in Germany. I haven't quite worked out where it is. Uh, it's probably really obvious. Um, and also coordinates, presumably also from where they live. So I like it, good work. Well, I guess that's one way to customize your helmet. Grab a Sharpie, do it yourself. Or spray paint it to match your bike. Or you could, of course, just slap stickers on it. Okay, so we've got a cool 3D printed storage system on this bike, uh, potentially homemade, whether we bought it or not. But uh, yeah, so they've just filled in this void behind what would be the Elite CX Chrono Aero Bottle and then their little storage unit. Okay, they've had to use tape to hold the lid on, but good job. Well, this one caught my eye, uh, a Red Bull helmet. Now, traditionally, these are only handed out to Red Bull pro athletes, and you are not, as a Red Bull athlete, allowed to hand those hats or helmets or anything like that onto any old punter. 789 is Michael Weiss, not, I've checked, the Michael Weiss pro triathlete. So, yeah, I'll throw it out to you guys. Do you know of a Michael Weiss ex-pro triathlete, maybe from back in the day? But, yeah, pretty cool. A little shout out here, because as I wander around, I'm seeing a lot of these. This is a little storage unit behind the bottle, based on the down tube and between the seat tube, um, and fit just behind the bottle. These are 3D printed, and specifically I'm seeing a lot of these by Radsport. These are made specifically for certain bikes. So as you can see, this one is the Canyon CFS model, but I've seen the BMC models, various others, so yeah. Well done, Radsport. Now with the gravel and road touring world expanding massively over the recent years, we're obviously seeing more and more bags made for bikes. And this is an ingenious idea. Someone's just using one for a travel. I mean, it makes sense. So they're using a top tube storage bag. So you've got spares and food, etc., in there. But it's a really sleek design. Probably not something we're going to see the pros using, but hey, good idea. Well, this is fun because beside me here, I have a little road bike, which is, I think, from the 1990s, maybe even earlier than that, although it doesn't have down tube shifters. I'm sure someone out there can fact check in the comment section down below. Um, it's even got some incredibly old aero bars on them with the shifters on the end, but quite common to see this in a transition of a very long distance race because beside me, we have the polar opposite, a brand new Canyon Speedmax. I mean, look at the two of them, polar opposites. This is fun because beside me here, I have one of the previous Swift Triathlon Academy members' bikes. This is Philip Herbers. But over here, we've got one of the current Swift Triathlon Academy members. This is Neil Eddy's bike. He's the current Swift Triathlon Academy member. This is the new paintwork for the Shiv this year. A uh, couple of cool customizations or bits going on here. He's duct taped his bottle in between the aero bars. Not exactly high tech, but fun to see. Uh, but he has also got a bottle mounted on the top tube. We don't see that very often, but yeah, nice. Right, so the owner of this bike has actually just grabbed me and pulled me over to his bike, and rightly so, because it's a very good looking bike. So he's riding a Quintana Roo. He's got osymmetric chain rings on there. He's actually got a whopping 58 tooth chain ring uh, up front here. Literally like a corn on the cob at the back here. It's so small in terms of the gear ratio. So he is down to go fast here. Um, and he's got the fast forward Falcon wheels. So just got this two spoke uh, setup going on. Apparently these are not in production anymore, so you can't get hold of these, but he says that's because they're too fast. I like it. 
Now this may well be my favorite paint job on a bike to date. Uh, Canyon made this as a limited run ahead of Kona 2021, which unfortunately obviously didn't happen. We saw Jan posing with the bike, but they did them in a limited run that people could buy. And this is the first that I've ever seen in flesh. It's wicked. I love it. Well, it's the brand I don't see that often. It's Airstream, who come from Salzburg and make incredibly good bikes. Um, but this is a wicked paintwork. I don't know if it's custom or not, but it's an amazing finish on it. A nice little metallic glitter in there as well. This is cool. So this is the Zip Super 9 disc, um, but obviously very bright white and that is because they did them in a limited number of colorways for their 30th anniversary i believe they did it in four different colorways uh, you're not going to see the pros using these colorways because they're going to be using the latest products the latest designs so this is what i love about the age group transitions so this is pretty special. I've seen a couple of these actually in the transition. This is the Isaac Eretic bike. I believe these are from the early 2000s. I actually don't know a ton about them. There's not a ton actually out there online about these. It looks like a monocoque design frame, but I may be wrong. It's an incredibly cool looking bike though. Very aggressive for its age. Well, I think this is compulsory every time you go into transition and you see one of these. This is a Diamondback Andean. I mean, they're wild. It's such a crazy design. Dare I say, I think it's actually growing on me a tiny bit. Uh, yeah, absolutely insane design. Um, very low to the ground, but this does look pretty cool as a setup. It's got a tri-spoke on the front, disc wheel on the back, very sleek, very black. I like it actually. Having now seen this paintwork and wheel combo, I might take that back. It's pretty outrageous. Well, get a load of this. So this is a very modern S-Works Shiv tri-bike with almost a quite antique look and feel to it. Uh, I'm not sure quite what the design is. It almost looks like a Chinese plate uh, that maybe my nan might have had. Uh, but no, it is genu genuinely really cool. Uh, on the front here on their tri-spoke wheel, they've actually got a vinyl in the same design. And presumably here on the frame it is actually being painted. So sent off to a paint shop. And then again, a vinyl on the disc wheel. And they've even gone to the extent of doing the helmet too. Get a load of this lightweight disc wheel. Now you don't see them in this colorway anymore. This is a very old setup, tubular. Um, they were pretty much the fastest and lightest disc wheel of their time many years ago. Um, but yeah, still look really cool, don't they? Right, so here we've got two bikes with standard sort of deep section wheels on, but they've converted them into disc wheels. And no, they haven't done my DIY disc wheel, which you can check out if you like. They've used the Easy Disc disc wheel covers. So these can go onto your normal wheels. You can get them in different sizes for different sets of wheels. So this person here has got the DT Swiss wheels, very deep section wheels. So they've got a slightly smaller disc wheel cover. And then on this one, they've got a set of shallower um, Mavic Cosmic, uh, sorry, yeah, Mavic wheels. Um, and they've got a slightly larger disc wheel. But yeah, these install really well. They've got these really clever rivets on, but they look neat. And actually at a glance, you wouldn't know that they weren't normally a disc wheel. So yeah, good stuff. Well, I have honestly lost count of the number of 3D printed toolboxes that I've seen today. And some of them, they don't look like they're made by brands necessarily. Perhaps people are literally getting them made themselves, which is amazing. Uh, this is another one. Uh, this is made by Four Frames. I haven't actually come across that brand before, uh, but it's even got the dimpling effect on it, which would match their Elite Chrono CX bottle, which would go here. Fits snugly in on this Canyon Speedmax. Uh, good job couple of fun things on this bike. So firstly, we've got this hydration system on the front. I came across this brand for the first time the other day in the Expo. Uh, if you haven't checked out our Expo video, do that because this brand comes from Frankfurt. They make hydration systems in a number of different sizes for different bikes. And the way that they attach is very, very clever. And also you can then just attach attach computer mounts into there. Do check it out. You can print off templates and work out which one fits your bike. But then I also quite like the vinyl on the top tube of this bike. Never mind the box. Uh, yeah, uh, if anyone's ridden a TT or triathlon bike for any amount of time, they'll know exactly what that's about.
Another incredibly old bike here. We've got a Mosa bike, not entirely sure on the age of it, uh, but it's got obviously some triathlon and TT modifications. It's got the Sintas base bar and tri bars or aero bars on there. Not only that, we've also got grip shift gear levers or gear changes on the end of those. And in addition, we've also got some incredibly old city shoes. Well, this looks a little bit familiar. This is Quinn's bike. Yeah, so Quinn Gaskell, one of our cameramen from the team, is doing his first triathlon, an iron distance triathlon here at Challenge Rot. Uh, he is on the trusty Boardman that I upgraded. We've, we've changed a couple of bits since, but mostly it's the same. Um, and yeah, we are doing a bit of a feature on it. There's a couple of videos coming out very soon, so do stay tuned and yeah, support Quinn. I'm sure he's gonna be fine. Um, can anyone explain to me what's going on here? It seems like a majority of this saddle's missing. Um, I understand kind of the concept, but if you were to go over a bump and fall forwards, or maybe they're gonna add some more tomorrow. I'm hoping they're gonna add some more tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay, so I said I was just doing age group tech, but when Jan Fredonio's bike's in transition, it'd be rude not to. And I have spotted, although we have featured his bike fairly recently, it's much the same. Other than the saddle, previously he was riding the Cobb Joff 55 saddle. He's on the new Ergon prototype saddle. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see if that's released, when it's released. It looks relatively similar to the Cobb Joff, but yeah, neat. Well, hats off to Wolfgang, this is amazing. So they've got a little bucket that they've made underneath their aero bars. I haven't quite worked out where they've made it from. It almost looks carbon fiber-esque, but I believe it's not. I think it's some sort of wicker and then they've put some resin over the top. It looks like they've shaped it so it fits. It's flat at the back, it sort of scoops round under the aero bars. And then on top of that, they've added some Velcro to the side and then actually made this zip area, sort of textile fabric bit on the top so they can access it. So presumably they've got all their gels and their everything they need in there. Awesome, love it. Well, this one took me a while to figure out. I've heard of homemade parts for bikes before, but this is essentially a homemade bento box, or at least from what I can work out. So they have got a piece of cardboard acting almost like a tray or a plate for the food that they're going to carry on the bike. And then presumably that's gonna go in this sandwich bag, which is a Ziploc bag. They've taped it onto the front of that plate so that the wind, I guess, catches it, keeps it down in place. Um, but it's a little kind of, I guess, sweet bag for them in the front of their bike. Great. Whew. This is pretty different. Uh, so we've got a Fuji bike here, which we don't see a ton of these days. Uh, I think it's a Fuji Color, um, but it's a, a safari paintwork on it. Uh, we've got lines on there, we've got flamingos, we've got flowers, um, who knows what else. It's actually quite cool, quite like it, eh? Well, I think it's fair to say we found some pretty weird, wonderful, and wacky tech out there. Uh, let us know what you think of all of it in the comment section down below. Let us know what your favorite was and what you thought maybe was a little bit outrageous. If you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe.